Do you know how to behave with strangers and what to say to them to keep yourself safe? Here are some tips. Check if you know them all. You're on vacation and traveling solo. There's a long line of people waiting to check in at the hotel. It's your turn, finally, and the inexperienced receptionist happily announces that your room number will be 321. I know you're tired and can't wait to get into the room, but for your safety, ask the receptionist to give you a new room and write the number on a piece of paper this time. No one in that line needs to know where you'll be staying. Before entering the hotel room, make sure there's no one in the hallway. Lock the door the second you get inside. Before going to sleep, put some things in front of the door. If someone gets inside the room at night, they'll fall and wake you up. If someone in the hotel lobby asks you if you're traveling alone, always tell them, no, I'm with friends. The same rule works for planes, trains, and any other transportation. You never know if your fellow passenger is asking that out of curiosity to have a chat or if they have something mean in mind. When someone asks if you're staying at that hotel, don't rush to answer, sure. Instead, tell them you're waiting for a friend or colleague. If you ever need directions and someone offers to walk you to the place, politely reject that offer. I know how to get there. All they have to do is point you in the right direction. You never know where a stranger might take you if you blindly follow them. If a stranger asks, where are you staying? Avoid the answer or give them some popular hotel name like Hilton. Those hotels are everywhere. If you want or have to be more honest with them, narrow down the area you're staying in, but never mention the exact hotel name. If a passerby gets too interested in you and won't leave, act weirdly. Pretend you don't speak their language, even if you just did like two minutes ago. Make weird faces or start singing. The more attention you draw to yourself, the better. No one will do anything to a person everyone is staring at. When planning your travels, try to avoid arriving at a new place when it's dark outside. It's always easier to find your hotel in the light of day when there are more transfer options and people around. You'll feel more secure and save some cash. Speaking of cash, I guess we all know the good old trick of hiding it in your underwear, money belt, or other accessories. But always make sure to have at least some money in a dummy wallet. If the worst happens and someone wants it, you can always throw it at them to not make them angry because you have nothing to give them. When ordering food, you don't have to give them your real name. If you feel uncomfortable inventing a fake name for yourself, just say it's for someone else and use some common name. If you ever have to give your address at a crowded pharmacy or the store, say, sign up for a loyalty program. Never say it out loud. Whisper it or write it on paper so strangers don't hear it. You've just finished some successful shopping. You return to the most empty and dark parking lot at the mall and get in your car. Wait, is that a jacket on your windshield? You decide to get it off. Stop right there. This is a trick bad guys use to get in and drive away in your vehicle. Let security know about it and ask them to escort you to the car and wait until you go away safely. The same trick works with flat tires. If you notice it after a visit to your favorite store or restaurant, go back in and ask someone to help you. If you approach your car alone, someone might come up to you and offer help. And that someone will most likely be the person to blame for your flat tire. When you exit your workplace, no matter if it's a small store or an office, never answer the question about your working hours directly. Tell whoever is wondering they aren't fixed and the manager decides about them. And if someone is wondering if you're working alone, always tell them there's someone else in the back. Did you enjoy making up secret languages and code words as a child? You can now use this skill for your safety. Agree about a secret phrase with your family or close friends to share if you can't talk or text usually. No worries, mm. I'm going on an adventure. Mm. Could stand for send help ASAP. You can take this life-saving game to the next level and decipher the name of the highway you're on or the mall where you got in the car with someone you no longer feel comfortable about. Knowing some basic self-defense techniques never hurts, even if you, hopefully, never get to use them. 
Remember, the most vulnerable spots to aim for are the eyes, the nose, the jaw, the Adam's apple in the front of the neck, the solar plexus just below the ribs, the knee, and the instep. If you ever have to share an elevator ride with a stranger, stand with your back to the buttons panel. This way, they won't be able to stop it between the floors. Never check in on any social media when you arrive at your restaurant, hotel, or new mall. Do it after you leave. Your friends will be just as excited or jealous, whatever you're aiming for. And you'll protect yourself from digital stalkers. Those people can track down anyone, especially if you have a public account. If you don't feel comfortable living alone in your new area, make it look like you actually don't. Drop a couple of pairs of slippers of different sizes on the outside doorstep. This way, whoever is interested will get the idea several people live inside. Get to know your neighbors. You may or may not end up making new friends, but at least you'll have some people who know you and will react if they notice some suspicious action around your house or apartment. Did you know that most break-ins take place in the middle of the day? The FBI says burglaries happen midday because people are outside the house. Don't let your home be an easy mark for theft. Here are 10 tips to protect your home and some security items you might need along the way. Number one on our list is portable door locks. They aren't just designed for regular houses. Let's say you stay in a rented house where other guests also come and go. You can carry one of these portable locks with you. Many rooms have secondary locking mechanisms besides the regular lock, like security chains attached to the door, but you shouldn't always rely on them. These mechanisms are only held by screws. It means they're easy to dislocate. There are many portable lock models, so what should you look for? Ease of use is the key for installation and removal in case of emergency. Most inward swing doors are suitable for these items. Adalock is a good example. You can find it on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive, has a versatile design, and most importantly, comes in one piece. It takes seconds to upgrade your safety. You insert the claws into the door strike plate and then close the door. It'll be held in position with a handle. There you go. Burglars don't hang out in your house or bother stealing heavy stuff like TVs. They want to get in and out in under 10 minutes. What you should do is take some precautions to slow them down. Laminated glass is great for this. You should consider investing in it. Normal windows that are made with tempered glass can shatter easily, but laminated windows are like shields. They can crack but not break apart. Instead of making smashing noises and grabbing attention, the burglar will probably leave. The structure of laminated glass is different from the regular one. It holds the piece intact even after a strong impact. Laminated glass windows are 100 times stiffer and 5 times more durable than standard. What makes these types of glass so special? Firstly, it's made with layers. There are two layers of glass and there's a vinyl material in between that helps keep the two layers intact. As a bonus, laminated ones have a soundproofing feature. Two birds with one stone. The interlayer absorbs some of the outside noise. It's glass after all. Aren't we going to see the vinyl layer? That might be the question that popped into your head. Nope, laminated glass is transparent just like other types. Enjoy the crystal clear views while staying safe. I would say, but unfortunately, it's expensive to get these specifically manufactured burglar deterring glasses. You can have professionals install a laminate film onto your standard windows, or you can even buy security film. They all work according to the same principle, but obviously these alternatives cannot be as strong as the laminated glass itself. The next few tips come from an ex-burglar, Michael Fraser. Now he's giving bits of advice on how to protect from theft. His first tip is quite interesting. Don't put a beware of the dog sticker if you have a dog. If a dog can walk around the house without triggering the alarm, so can a human. This is the way burglars think. 
Plus, many dogs get friendly in a short time unless they're specifically trained to catch strangers. Otherwise, they can easily be put in a room and, well, you know the rest. Bye-bye to precious items. Advertising your house for sale online is a standard procedure to attract potential buyers, but also thieves. With your innocent picks, burglars can have floor plans with virtual tours. They can easily spot the entry and escape routes. Sounds like a perfect plan to rob a house. Number five is buying a home security system. It helps prevent thefts and notifies you if that happens. According to the data, homes without a security system are almost three times more vulnerable to break-ins. There are numerous ones to choose from. Some are pricey, but luckily, there are affordable options too. You don't even have to call professionals. This do-it-yourself security system from Amazon is an example of a budget-friendly gadget with useful features. These types of devices are designed to be easy to install. You'll be guided through an app for the software and for the product itself. Bonus, you won't have to deal with screws, tools, or drilling. They have fast emergency dispatch that can notify the authorities if you say so. Since it's easy to set up, it's perfect for short-term residents too. Remember I mentioned that if a dog can walk in the house, so can a thief? Well, technology is not in favor of thieves. These types of devices can now detect intruders and be friends with your pet. The sensors can be put in the window, doors, and corners, but still be adjusted to avoid fake alarms by the pets. Another device to add a layer of protection to you, especially in shared residences like dorms, is a doorstop alarm. These devices are very compact, so you can put them in your luggage and take them on your dream vacation. You can use it in your daily life. A doorstop alarm can be used on any door as long as you place it inside. It works as a door wedge, but it keeps the door closed. How does it work? When the alarm is triggered, it will keep the intruder outside the door and activate a noise alarm. It can wake the owner of the house or neighbors. This one, again, can be easily found on Amazon. Ex-burglar Michael also recommends thinking like a thief. Ask yourself, how would I get in? It's a great starting exercise for discovering vulnerable spots. Walk around your home. Is there a window that can be easily opened? Oh wait, is it your laptop on the desk that can be seen from the street? Speaking of the street, if you buy a new electronic device like a TV or a computer, don't leave the empty cartons displayed near the trash container. This looks like an invitation to thieves. When you think of the world's most dangerous bird, as I do sometimes, eagles or vultures may come to your mind. Surprisingly, these awkward cassowaries may cause way more damage than the other, more notorious angry birds I first mentioned. The largest cassowary species may be as tall as an average person and weighing as much. These plump birds can't fly, but neither can you. Plus, they run fast, so don't you try to escape from them. They can reach you even in water since they're great swimmers. They can run as fast as 30 miles per hour, so you might need a getaway car if there's a cassowary who's mad at you. But don't worry, their attacks are quite rare anyways. Mute swans are gorgeous, graceful creatures. At least that's what we all think. But touching one of these 28-pound birds is a bad idea. They have bony spurs in their wings that they use to take enemies out. Their wingspan is about 8 feet, and they can slap you with all of that. And they also bite. Don't ever get too close to one. They regularly go after humans, especially if the bird has younglings nearby. And don't let the name fool you either. They aren't mute. Swans can hiss loudly and even bark. Good warning signs that you're encroaching a bit too close. Humans and magpies have always had weird, almost love-hate relationships. These medium-sized birdies can be pretty aggressive at times, but if you treat them well, you'll probably become friends. They can recognize human faces, and they're sure to come back to your balcony if you treat them to something yummy. If you offend a magpie, they're gonna remember that too and bear some grudges. So keep an eye on your eye. Pardon the pun. 
Pelicans are symbols of love, and they say they're ready to sacrifice their own life to protect their offspring. Ah, now it's clear why they can swallow the entire prey without even chewing it or tearing it. You just don't want to go near their nest. Sure, you're not a tiny fish and pelican beaks are too small for a human being. But you don't want to be bitten now, do you? Okay, this one's going to frighten you only with its name. A shoebill stork is an impressively large bird, up to 5 feet, just below the average human height. No wonder they can fight a crocodile. Alright, a baby crocodile. But they need only their super powerful jaw to win in one hit. Still not afraid? Well, they make blood-chilling noises, as if you were in some action blockbuster movie. Hmm. If you think these cowardly ostriches don't pose any danger, you got it wrong. Twice! First, they actually don't shove their heads in the sand. It's an optical illusion. And yeah, how are they even supposed to breathe in the sand? Second, these guys are kind of overprotective parents, so if you ever want to approach their young, these heavyweight beasts who can run as fast as a car within city limits are gonna come for you. Not scared yet? Well, you should be. Ostriches are the closest living relatives to T. rex, together with chickens. What scenes look quite harmless, except for their foul smell, but that's another story. But their babies have notorious wings. The chick's flappers have two distinct claws that are multi-purpose. First, they are a sort of protection against predators. And second, they help them climb trees in case the baby's out of the nest. Once they grow up, the claws disappear just like milk teeth. Size doesn't matter at times. If you were a hummingbird, you'd have to eat almost 300 pounds of food per day to maintain normal weight with that little bird's metabolism. But the lifespan would be way shorter too, only about 3 to 5 years. If you dye your hair, you probably have more in common with a bearded vulture than you might think. We're probably the only two species in the world who use dye on purpose. Vultures dye their feathers with red soil to show their dominance over other birds. People? Well, we just like changes. California condors may not be as large as an aircraft, but they're huge anyways. Their wingspan is almost 10 feet. These are potentially dangerous for people, but chances that you ever meet them are slim. There are only about 200 of them left in the U.S. Here you are, looking for something yummy in the fridge, but you just can't see what you really want. If you were a bastion thrust, you'd break wind at the fridge. (laughs) Sounds gross, but that's apparently the way these birdies look for hiding worms. They give them a gas attack, so the worms get shocked and yippee! They are now an easy target for a bastion thrush. Hold your nose and bon appetit! Okay, enough of those funky stories. Let's look at the skies. You wouldn't expect a poisonous bird on this list, but alas, I present to you the hooded pitahui. Scientists found out they were poisonous when they kept experiencing numbness and a burning sensation after handling these birds. There are lots of toxins in their feathers, especially on the underside. The birds don't produce toxins themselves. They probably get them from the beetles they eat. Or how about the spur-winged goose? These guys are notorious for being toxic, too. And the toxicity comes from munching on blister beetles. It's safe to touch them, but eating one can lead to irreversible consequences. Wink, wink. The toxin remains even after cooking. To make any matches waterproof, cover them with a thin layer of transparent nail polish and let them dry well. To always have something to light them with, glue a piece of fine sandpaper to a lid of a plastic box and put matches inside. Cotton clothing won't keep you safe and warm out in the wild. It takes forever to dry from sweat or rain, and wet clothes lose heat 25 times faster than dry ones. If you don't want to freeze, go for polyester, nylon, or wool. Take microfiber towels that dry in an hour. If you're lost in a forested area, Try to find a spot with dark or damp soil. It's likely there's water under it, and you can make a seep well for fresh drinking water there. Dig a hole about twice as wide as your arm from elbow to fingertip and half as deep. 
Use small rocks to line the side and the bottom to keep the dirt from your fresh water source. You can use your t-shirt or a bandana as a water filter. Put one end of it in a container filled with dirty water standing above an empty container for clean water. The other end goes in there, and the water pours in, cleansing itself on the way. Be sure to boil the filtered water before you drink it. Another use for your t-shirt is a dew collector. Wipe it over some grass covered with dew early in the morning, then squeeze it into a container and you'll have safe drinking water. You can also leave it in a rainstorm to collect some water. A clean shirt or fabric works best. To survive a waterfall plunge, take a deep breath as you are getting close to the edge. Reposition your body to go down feet first. Wrap your arms around your head and seal your nose from water with your elbows. Tense your muscles, put your legs together, and close your mouth and eyes as tight as you can. When you get to the bottom, start swimming away from the waterfall while you're still underwater. Now, if you ever fall into rapids, hold onto a boulder, a log, or whatever comes handy so that the water doesn't carry you deeper. Throw off any heavy gear and start swimming downstream in the direction of the shore. Don't stand up and walk even if the water seems shallow, because the currents can carry you back. To come out of a storm dry and warm, you can make yourself a waterproof trash bag mini shelter. Just make a hole for your face and put it on. Use two bags to keep your feet dry, too. You can also build an A-frame shelter out of a trash bag. Find some cordage for the central rib. Split the bag into a blanket and cover the rib with it. Use four rocks to keep the corners down. If you hear thunder outside, count the seconds between it and the lightning flash. If it's less than 30 seconds, you've got to hide somewhere because the storm is too close. If you can't do that, at least stay away from tall, lone trees. If you're in a group, spread out to minimize the risks of everyone getting struck. To help your campfire keep you warm for longer, put some rocks around it. They'll keep the heat and spread it even when the fire is gone. You can also boil water with them if you drop a hot rock in a metal container with water. To escape quicksand, shift your weight to your right leg and shake your left foot to get it up to the surface. Get your left knee on top of the sand and shake your right foot to get it out into a kneeling position as well. When you're on solid ground again, carefully roll as far away from the quicksand as you can. If you find yourself trapped inside a cave, you have to stay calm and not use matches to light up your way. It can take some priceless oxygen from you. Protect yourself from breathing in dust with a t-shirt or whatever you're wearing. Just wrap it around your head. Make a whistle out of an acorn cap to call for help. Hold the cap with both hands between your thumb and index finger. Make a V with your thumbs near the top of the acorn. Hold it close to your mouth and let some air in that triangle in the cap. You gotta practice a bit to make a loud sound. To stay warm in the wild, use grass or leaves. Get them under your clothes or blankets for an extra layer of insulation. This tip works both for winter and summertime. You always risk losing more body heat than you can produce. To set a tree on fire even when it isn't dry, use the Swedish fire log technique. Set the log vertically, make a star-shaped incision as deep as possible. Put some splinters and dry grass inside the log and set it on fire. It should start burning quickly and last from 2 to 5 hours, no matter what size or type of wood you use. As you prepare to spend a night in the wild, Find a big rock that can fit your sock or pillowcase. Put it close to your campfire to absorb some heat, but don't let it get burning hot. Turn it around so that it warms up on each side. Once it's ready, carefully wrap it in your cloth with two layers for better insulation and put it into your sleeping bag. In case you go kayaking and your vessel flips upside down, don't try to turn it over from underwater. Instead, get yourself out of it and swim deeper down and away from the kayak, and only then get out of the water. If you're nearsighted and lose your glasses or contacts in the wild, curl your index finger into a tiny hole and look through it. A pinhole works like a natural lens that lets the light through in one place and keeps things in focus. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.